What is Old Alemannic? Let's find out. Well, it is a, or was, a historical West Germanic dialect from roughly the 700s to the 1100s in Switzerland, South Baden, and Eastern France. Um, 1100s, this is pretty interesting of itself because normally some people, well, most linguists or historical linguists would end around the, around the, uh, like 11, sorry, pardon me, uh, 1050 would be more or less the end of the old high German period, but I guess when it comes to dialects, it, it varies because, because not all dialects are the same. They all have their own histories and like their own historical phonologies and, and, uh, developments and whatnot. So, let's move right on. So, we have a map here of where the centers of where we have the texts of, if you will. We got uh, Mua, Muabach, and on the left there, in the center we have Reichenau. And then we have a Sankt Gallen. Alright, so three places in this part of uh, Europe, or, or in Germany, or Switzerland, or, or Fran Eastern France, if you will, where Old Alemannic was spoken and written down. Old Alemannic went through the second sound shift, or, the real, if you, or if you will, the high continent shift, and due to this, uh, Old Alemannic is within the dialect group of Old High German. All right. So, ger and German here, we got bear in mind, is used a little loosely here to really mean the like Germanic, right? So let's move right on. Furthermore, it is often paired with Old Bavarian under the label of Upper German. Uh, this is due to geographical uh, reasons, the fact that, you know, uh, uh, Al Old Alemannic and Old Bavarian are both in the south, um, as well as they both share, um, they both share some common features. That's why they would be labeled together under Upper German. Old Alemannic uh, was a dialect that was spoken by the Alemanni. And for those of you who know history, that um, the Alemanni were actually a uh, confederation of tribes. So it's not just one single tribe called the Alemanni. It's, a, it's really a group of them together, a confederation under the label of Alemanni. Right. And this, an old Alemannic be, uh, evolved into the uh, dialects um, that we have, um, that evolved later on in history, and i show the map again. So, for example, uh, Swiss German uh, has its origins in, uh, in old Alemannic, as well as uh, dialects and some dialects in Germany and other parts of Europe, or what have you. I don't want to go too much into that because I'm not too expert in, in that field, but, um, but to move right on, uh, what is attested? All right, what, what, what is out there that we can read in Old Alemannic? Well, there are some glosses and, and names, and, and a gloss, for those of you who don't know, is um, a list of words uh, uh, where on the left side it would be, let's say, in Latin, and then the other side would be in uh, the native language. In this case, it would be Old Alemannic. And also we have names, uh, so this can range from kings all the way to priests, uh, well, bishops, and and scribes and whatnot, and just personal names in general. Uh, from the 700s, uh, we have the uh, Sanks uh, Gala, uh, Pater Noster und uh, Credo, or, or if you will in English, Saint Gall Lord's Prayer and Creed. Uh, in the 9th century, in the 800s, we have the Interlinear Psalms. Uh, interlinear uh, refers to, so what you would have, um, you would have a Latin manuscript if you will of you know let's say well in this case the psalms and in between the latin like the scribe in question would put in the old alemannic so that is what is meant by interlinear um there you got the moabach hymns which is cool of itself from the 800s uh then then from the 9th century yeah so from the 9th century to the 10th century we have the christus und uh, samarit samaritaren uh, Christ and, and Samaritan. Um, it's interesting in itself because the manuscript itself is from the 10th, but the text itself was from the 9th century. So yeah, so the, yeah, that's the thing to bear in mind with when it comes to dating of texts, because there is a distinction between like when it was written down originally, when it was created originally, as opposed to like uh, what manuscript we have it in.
because it could, it could, you can have something like written out in, let's say, in one century, uh, but then you can have copies of the same thing that, and and one of those copies could be from a much later date. So, that's something to bear in mind. And then we have the Gjogslit, uh, which is George's song from the ten, from the ninth to the tenth century. From the tenth to eleventh century, we have the translations by Nodka, which is it cool of itself. All right. But then, more interestingly, later on, in the 12th century, we have the Physiologus. Physiologus we have in the 1100s. Which is really interesting of itself because Old High German in general, the Old High German period, if you will. You know, so, some linguists would say, that, oh yeah, it ended roughly around 1050. Um, but I guess in the case of Old Alemannic, it lasted a little longer. Uh, I guess whoever wrote this, um, you know, was one of the few, um, you know, old Alamac writers in his time. So, that's something to bear in mind that the thing is that each language has its own story, so to speak, has its own development and whatnot. Some last longer, some don't last longer, or what have you. But moving right on. So, let's say you want to, you know, read some old Alamanic. Here's a great book by uh, Wilhelm um, Brauner. The link is in the description below. Um, as well as this book here, uh, this Lesebuch, this uh, reader, if you will, by Dr. Hans Naumann. Uh, but when it comes to actually studying uh, Old Alemannic, um, I would highly recommend this book by Joseph Wright. Um, this is a great tool for beginners. Um, should you want to learn from this book or any book that has to do with this stuff, please read them slowly because um, this is not something you can pick up overnight. All right, so there's that. Um, as for studying Old Alemannic in great detail and in intimate detail of like the uh, of the of no, like knowing in depth of the dialect or what have you, and the sound changes that happened, I would highly recommend this book by uh, Lino uh, Armitage. An introduction to the study of Old High German. With this book alone, you can learn a lot about the dialects in general and whatnot. But again, for beginners, please study a long time from this one before you can get to this one. Because if you jump right into this one, yeah, you might learn a few things, but you know, um, a lot of it won't make sense. But I mean, you're free to you know, look at any of these. You know, learn at your own pace if you will, um, but I would recommend this for beginners because it, ha it actually has some old Alemannic text and it also has a grammar and whatnot and so and all that. But anyway, moving right on. Um, there is this book, the Alt Alemannische Grammatik by Prof. Dr. Um, I think it's Karl. I, 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 I think so. I could be wrong, but Karl. Um, born in Berger. Berger. Uh, the thing is, I, unfortunately, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a link where you can get this, but I know this exists because I've looked at other uh, 19th century books or old books on Google Books or archive.org that, that, that make a reference to this or what have you. Um, if you somehow know where to find it on the internet, uh, please let me know down below because it would be really nice to have this because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you would have some some intimate detail about the dialect in question so yeah um anyway guys uh thank you for watching uh please subscribe if you're new and if you really like the channel please become a patron at my patreon page down below thanks for watching bye bye